A lot of people, especially in the red pill community, have been doing videos talking about the list of places that women refuse to go to on a first date. Now, of course, most of these places are, pl are probably places that they've, they've already been to. And so why is this uh, sort of list getting so much popularity and where did it come from? In my opinion, you see a lot of this stuff being promoted, of course, by the government, whether it's through YouTube or through Google, which are heavily controlled by the government. And so at a time period where the government has created massive amounts of inflation, similar to what went on during the 1970s, it's no surprise that we would see this sort of propaganda being pushed uh, through the government. And of course, this equally happened in the 1970s, where there was a quote unquote day of strike where women went on strike. And you saw this was basically from uh, second wave feminism talking about world strike for peace, right? This comes at a, at, a, at, a, at a great time. Of course, this was during the Vietnam War. And of course, women to banding together in the sisterhood and where it says 50,000 feminists paraded, of course, in New York on Fifth Avenue of all places. Now, the result of all of these protests that were going on in the 1970s was, as they say there, you know, the number of marches exceeded the wildest dreams. So there was a lot of participation. And of course, a lot of it heavily revolved around uh, demeaning and demoralizing the relationships between men and women. At one point, they, you know, women were walking around wearing T-shirts talking about, uh, you know, to, to stop ironing, strike while the iron is hot or to stop uh, cooking for men. And they, what did they refer to? Them? Oh, I see, see, it was referred to as the solidarity was co completely exhilarating. And of course, this was the narrative, right? Uh, were veterans of civil rights and marches and anti-war protests of the 1960s, right? It was bigger than the protests of the 1960s. They basically, uh, right, under the demand of what? What? We demand equality. And so the result of what was going, I'm trying to look for that title. This was as a result. The result was it pushed for Title IX. This is, this is what happened in the 1970s. The women's movement was most successful in pushing for gender equality. Where? In the workplace and in universities. And so the purpose of all of these protests. Now, of course, these protests were sponsored. It's important to understand these are sponsored events. Right? Uh, let me see if I can find where the sponsor was. I remember looking at this article not too long ago. And talking about Here we go, right? Officially sponsored by the National Organization for Women, right? And so a lot of this stuff that is quote-unquote sponsored is often as a result of the government, right? The government just can't go out there and state, we create all this inflation, we need all you women, women to go out there and work so we can tax you. That is not going to go over well with many of these women. And so the government consistently has to drive wedges between men and women. And so there was an actual question on Quora online forum talking about why were children in the 1970s and the 1980s so independent? It was because there was nobody in the home. That's why. Because during that time period in the 70s where women were pushing for equality in the workplace, the result was the quote unquote freedom that children had during that time place. And so, of course, at that time, it was because all oh, things were less dangerous or uh, you know, the children were more behaved or whatever it was, you know, the people were different. I was like, no, it has to do with the government driving women into the workforce. The government pushed women into the workforce. And so naturally, there's no one there to look after the children. And so eventually, of course, you get systems of government for educating these systems. This is where the educational system really started to push for driving women into the workforce. And so it doesn't surprise me to see uh, these sort of things kind of like going viral, as they say, during a time period where the government has created so much inflation. Now, of course, women will try to fall back on finding men. Right? We need we want to find a man. We're going to become wife, you know, wives, girlfriends, you know, the whole soft girl era. Uh, and of course, during the time periods where typically women would, right, during high periods of inflation, they're like, oh shoot, gotta go find a man because I'm poor. I need someone to take care of me. And the government's like, uh-uh, we need you ladies to go out there and work. We need you to go out there and work so we can tax you. And so this is kind of why you see a lot of this stuff going viral. I talked about this during um, the collapse in the 90s. You saw the exact same thing. During the market crash of 06 that led into the stock market crash of 08 and 09, the housing market crash, this is where you got 
you know, All My Ladies Independent. That, that's where that song came from. That came from 2009, which was right after the huge market crash that we had and from 07 to 08. And so what did it do is it served to drive women back into the workforce because the government needs you to pay taxes so that you can pay for the entitlements. And so they saw slogans like this, right? Don't iron while the strike is, well, don't iron while the strike is hot. And of course, don't cook dinner, starve a rat today, right? Who was the rat, right? The rat was your husband. The rat was your significant other. And so you kind of see the, the, the propaganda from the state of constantly driving a wedge. Right? Don't cook for that man, right? He's, a, he's nothing more than a rat. They're trying to keep you in the home, barefoot and pregnant. They're trying to keep you from working. And so what it served to do at this time period, which is the exact thing that you're going to see today, you're going to see the environments as men are walking away from the system and, and putting in a hard days of labor. Because typically men who have families, who have children, who have wives, they'll go out there to earn resources for that for their family. And so as you see more and more men that are single, well, then there's no reason for them to go out there and really work all that hard because men don't need a lot. It's the women and children that basically are the expensive portion of the household. And so as more men don't have women and children, well, then they're going to work less because less is less is needed. They don't need that much. I'll spend my time fishing. I'll spend my time boating. I'll spend my time, you know, hiking, whatever it is. And the government can't do anything to kind of force them into labor. But what they can do is they can't propagandize the women. They can propagandize the women to things like this. What was the result, right? What was the result of all these videos that you saw talking about this, right? Men are like, well, we're just not going to take the women out at all, right? And that's the point. That's the point, is to continue divide and conquer, to continue to drive a wedge between men and women. And of course, many people who talk about this on YouTube don't talk about it from, from that standpoint. They talk about it, all these delusional women, the delusional women in their persistent requests. And I'm like, no, a lot of this stuff is just posted via the internet and it goes and it goes viral because they don't control the algorithms. The people who control things like YouTube and Google do. And these are heavily controlled by the government, right? Everybody should know this by now. Same thing happened with, right, with Twitter. Why does a lot of stuff go viral on Twitter? It's because it's known to be co-opted by the government. The government used Twitter during the election. And of course, under the guise of freedom of speech, they're like, oh, well, you go ahead, go Elon Musk, you go buy Twitter. And we'll pretend like it's a free speech so that the people can go out there and start talking. We want to know what are these people thinking so we'll give them the narrative. Oh, we're going to give them the narrative. Oh, Twitter is we're fighting for free speech now because we want to know what the people are thinking. We need the people to start speaking up so that we can understand what's on their mind so that we can then start to propagandize them. And this goes on generation to generation. It doesn't surprise me. And you'll probably see more of this moving forward. As women fall into poverty, women will, by nature, will try to find a man to rely on. And you'll start to see more propaganda about pushing driving men and women apart some women are more than likely going to fall for it i would say the majority of women because women are easily fooled are going to fall for this propaganda some people might like screw all this stuff this is kind of why you see a lot of the the young women who are t talking about the hard nine to five there was that young pretty girl who was like oh the harshness of working nine to fives and then there was like that other woman that was like, now we got to go to school and we got to go get educated and we got to get jobs. And she was like, why would you push for this stuff? I could have been a housewife and stayed at home. Why would you push for this stuff? And so from their standpoint, they're like, this makes absolutely no sense. We were taken care of at home. Why would you push to go to work? It makes absolutely no sense. But it does when you're the government. It does if you understand the financial system of things. When you understand that socialism will always continue to look for more people's wealth to rob then you understand the system of things. And then when you understand the system of things, well, then you'll understand how, how the thing works and how it continues to progress. Anyway, I'm going to leave this here. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will check you next time.